store. Did you have any difficulty with people who didn't follow you? No, because I was there for this. I usually work like the 10 to 4 shift, the opening of the restaurant, so I'm the first server on to get everything ready. Being nine months pregnant, it was exhausting, but I pushed through, especially knowing we were going to a midnight showing. I just needed to make money. So I work for Legacy Traffic Management. We were temporary traffic control. I was working that day. And I went to get pizza for everybody for helping us move into the house. AJ went to my brother's to mow his yard to make money so he could go to the movie. I've been a police officer for over 32 years. I come home. He said, hey, thanks for mowing the yard. She says, well, you can thank your nephew, AJ. He came over and mowed him. I said, well, how much did you pay him? She says, $40. I said, 40 bucks? I'll mow it for $40, for gosh sakes. That night at Hula, it was the first time we were going to dance fire poi. I messaged him, like, come over and watch this. This is so cool. And he said he was going to go watch Hula before they went to the movie. So I said, all right, you know, I love you. And then he left. It was like we were going to the Super Bowl. Uh, we were so, so excited to see this movie. I was going there to meet um, my friends from Red Robin, and I was bringing my, I brought my two children with me. I picked up my friend Ryan, from there, we drove to the movie theater. Uh, well, it was somewhat dangerous because I put uh, tinted windows, to, like a uh, film, tinted window film, on my windows so that I could gear up inside the car. But it doesn't let much light in, so it's hard to drive in the dark. It was just packed. There was hardly any place to park. Myself and my children, we arrived fairly early. My mom actually dropped my sister and I off. Our friends had already told us, like, we're already in line. There's already a line forming. So, like, make your way over here as soon as you can. And you can tell a lot of them were, like, Comic-Con, like, regulars. So it was really exciting. They parked in the back, right across from the Theater 9 emergency exit. Then I went to put the stuff on and get all the, all the weapons ready. Levi, 
the big popcorn, and then we got a soda. We always got cherry coke. We started. We had all of our snacks. We were. I guess you could say prepared. A vegan at the time, but I decided to have some fun, so I had some nachos. Yeah, hot dogs, some popcorn. We movie tickets from the dashboard of oh, the people that Oh, super pumped. Them. Clapping, like super like ready. Screaming, throwing popcorn. There was a lot of cheering. There was a lot of excitement. The house lights go down, and it's starting to get dark. starts and I actually remember having to slow my breathing because I was really pumped up and excited for what was to come. I was standing there in the outside and I could see him through the crack. I'm really gonna do this. It's really gonna happen. I heard the hissing burning my chest and my throat just completely closed up and like you couldn't even swallow. There was smoke everywhere, there was tear gas. It was from different counties, there's police officers. Get us some damn gas masks for Theater 9, we can't get in it. This team, I got seven down in Theater 9. There was like, so much blood. Theater 25, just notify all the hospitals, we got people coming in. I've got a child victim, I need rescue at the back door of Theater 9 now. To update you 
on the situation if you're just now joining us. At least 14 dead, 50 injured. Uh, a lot of those injuries are severe. I was sleeping, of course, and then I heard somebody knocking on the door, and I opened it up, and it was AJ's friend, and he said, you need to turn on the TV. I was sleeping. Uh, phone rang about 2.30, and it's Teresa. She's screaming on the phone. She said, I don't know where he is. I said, who? What are you talking about? She said, AJ, I said, he's at the movies. She says, no, 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 I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. She says, I, I can't, I don't know where he is. I can't get a hold of him. So what are you talking about? She said, turn the TV on. We just pulled up straight to the emergency doors. They saw my face all bloody and me being pregnant and Bryson saying there was a shooting at the theater. We need help, she's pregnant. We went into the gymnasium and hundreds of people in there waiting. So we go to the high school and I, um, you know, we wait and I saw an officer walk by with a little kid in his arms. La Samoa, which is AJ's girlfriend, she, uh, she still had AJ's blood on her when we saw her. We go to the cafeteria and we slowly start watching people leave. So we waited and we waited and waited and waited. They started whittling this crowd down to where there were only a few people left in the gymnasium. And so we stayed there the whole 18 hours. And my mom and dad my brothers and sisters and my sister-in-laws, they all came down there. 18 and a half hours later is when they finally told us. I started screaming and I sat down in the middle of the floor and I just screamed. <laughs> She collapsed at that point. I had to carry her pretty much back to back, just take care of her. It was heartbreaking. Have you ever heard a woman cry because of the loss of a child? It's horrible. It's awful. When it's your sister. It makes it worse. Nobody needs to bury a child in this way. The horrific and devastating effects on our family and continue to be and will always be part of our family. I don't understand why someone would need a high-powered rifle like that. He could put out 100 rounds of ammunition in a very short amount of time. Do you need that many rounds? I, I guess you do if you're going to go kill a lot of people. They're not used for anything but killing massive amounts of people in the smallest amount of time. If they had something in place where a red flag would go off when you buy X amount of bullets or X amount of guns, then maybe we could have saved more people. Nobody should go through this. Nobody should go through this. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. 
and unfortunately it's becoming all too common. In the wake of the Colorado shootings, Aurora residents came together to pray, to weep, to remember, and then they went and bought guns. Gun sales rise after mass shootings. It happens after the shooting rampage in Aurora, Colorado. Gun sales are rising across the country, and so is the stock price of America's biggest gun makers. The numbers are driven by a basic emotion, fear. Fear sells. The fear that's sold in our communities. I use firearms in my daily job, and I can tell you this, these guys are making a lot of money every time one of these incidents happens. And to preserve all of our freedoms, we must get larger, we must get stronger, greater in financial resources. These individuals from the NRA are very good about giving away money to these individuals if they'll fight their fight for them. The proposed assault weapons ban is a singularly ineffective piece of legislation. The issue of assault weapons is a phony. It's purely emotional and designed to do nothing but frighten the American people. There was a big hubbub about assault-style rifles, and, and actually what it was was just the cosmetic look of those guns. You don't hunt with a, an AK-47. You don't go hunting with a, an AR-15 unless you're hunting humans. My nephew had the right to live, to grow, and to be a beautiful young man, and he was. But he had the right to get a job and to have a family and have children, and that was taken away from him. I love you. She went to a theater to see a movie and was killed. People go to their churches and they get slaughtered. That's not what we should be standing for. Columbine didn't need to happen. Virginia Tech didn't need to happen. Aurora didn't need to happen. Colorado started the universal background checks. Almost 700 people that have been denied access to firearms. Think of how many individuals that we have prevented from doing something stupid. This legislation is saving lives. If anybody can be prevented from getting that phone call that I got from my sister, it's worth it. We've had so many issues over the years, so many killings, and for us just to say we're not going to do anything is unacceptable. You got to stop it. We can't do this alone. We all have to work towards this, this common goal of stopping the madness. Today is the day, now is the time.